Today I want to talk a little bit about writing a scientific report, which is something that you would write when you complete an experiment to explain your data to other people. Scientific reports are important in biology and pretty much every science because that's how we get our information out to other people. And they have four main parts plus some additional things like a title page and a works cited section. Today, I am going to talk only about the introduction to the scientific report, and you can find the other parts of the scientific report in separate videos. You can follow along if you would like on the scientific reports in biology website, which should be something that you can easily find. And this is a good way to see what's happening in these scientific reports. So I'm going to go to the menu here and go to the important part, which is the introduction. All right, so what is an introduction to a scientific report? The introduction does really three or four major things. The first thing it does is it tells what the topic, the generalized topic that's being studied is and why that topic is important to people and to science. It is not important because you're trying to learn it. It is important to science in general. That's, that's a key concept. Next, you want to define the important terms that are involved and then cite any current research on the area or in the case of putting together a simple scientific report, give an example of this process somewhere else. Finally, the introduction sets up the experiment by providing a hypothesis for what is going to happen. The details are here and in the how to write a lab or on a how to write a scientific report guide. But there are a few key things I will point out. One is that in this section, you're going to be referencing a lot of materials. In fact, almost everything except the hypothesis is going to come from some other material because it's not information you were born knowing. If you didn't take a science class, you wouldn't know it. So you have to cite it. You also need to paraphrase, meaning put it in your own words and still cite it. Scientists tend not to quote each other. We paraphrase and we cite. And you'll see examples of this. So it says, start out any introduction with a paragraph that gives a few sentences explaining the overall concept and why it is important. That's the purpose. The purpose of writing this report is not to talk about a lab you did in class. It is to explain a subject matter. So the example talks about cellular transport. This is a necessary part of life, which is key thing. And it notes active transport, which means energy is used. So that's just telling a little bit about the topic. Perhaps you're talking about osmosis, which is passive transport. You would want to say that osmosis is passive transport of water. And then also why osmosis is generally important to the life of human beings, to plants, to anything. Maybe you're talking about enzymes, in which case you'd want to say that enzymes are catalysts that speed up reactions and that they are important and again, give a general sense of why you need them, which of course is to accomplish every reaction everywhere in biology. That's one paragraph. Next paragraph is going to define the important terms needed for the concept. Again, definitions are going to need to be in your words, but also cited. So there's examples of that here. And it notes that the field that studies the various physical, biological, and chemical aspects of the natural world is known as science, and then it cites a source. For basic definitions, any source is fine. You might find sources on .edu and .gov sites, but textbooks are also great sources, and you should consider using them. Make sure that you cite every definition, even if you recite the same source two or three times. That's the way biologists do it. Next, following the definitions, you want to give specific examples. This is where we reference previous research or previous literature on a subject. And in this case, all you need to do is find an example of the topic. So if you're doing osmosis, an example of osmosis in a plant or in a part of a human. If you're studying enzymes, you might want to examine how enzymes have been studied somewhere else, especially if they relate to, for example, temperature. Perhaps some other study has been done showing that enzymes 
decrease activity with cooler temperature. Perhaps you're examining respiration and you want to know if, again, temperature is a good one, but if light is related to respiration or photosynthesis in plants, and you would look for another study that just has examined those things, and you don't need to say very much about it, just what was found. Make sure you cite it. And then finally, you have a hypothesis. This is the only part that shouldn't be cited because the hypothesis comes from the information you already said, but it is your own thoughts on the experiment you are about to do. So introductions should be before an experiment has to be done. So you should always create a hypothesis assuming you've never seen the end result. So you tell what the experiment will generally do and then tell what is expected to happen. Be sure not to use any pronouns. Biologists are not into pronouns, so you don't say, I expect that, or we thought that. No, no, no. You say that this thing will happen. So these cells will increase or decrease, or expected to increase or decrease. These enzymes are expected to be more or less active. Those kinds of things. Then in general, you can see an entire introduction. So here, you can see it talks about tissues in general with a couple of citations. It gives a set of definitions of the different types of tissues. It gives an example of each of them by talking about the types of motor neurons, the types of muscle, the types of connectives. So you can see there's a lot of detail. It says that it is expected that and then talks about what the hypothesis for this study is going to be. And that is how you put together an introduction to a scientific report.